what you're looking at me for? Wow. Welcome back to Alpha Later, folks. Jeff and some guy on the internet out here with you today. We brought you something made by Leon Guthrie. Leon Guthrie runs a YouTube channel and a Facebook page called Buck and Slug Reloaders Forum. And uh, it's a great little resource if you're into this kind of thing about reloading and uh, all the nerdy stuff that goes behind shotgun shells. So uh, go by and take a look, give his Facebook page a look, and also his YouTube channel. He's got some If you still use stuff. Facebook. It's like the only thing I use <laughs> Facebook for is yeah. check out what's going on over there. A lot of people have bailed on Facebook, but if you're still on Facebook, swing by and take a look at their uh, chat over there about different slugs and ammunition and powder weights and all that nerdy stuff. So, hey, he sent us uh, something today that is a design from the 1930s. It's essentially a simple cylinder with an additional cylinder on top, kind of a graduated step-down cylinder, uh, made originally by Yankee Hill. Uh, Leon has a mold. He molded these rounds for us. Uh, Jeff was able did to- a beautiful job, by the way. Yeah. Really nice casting, yeah. Good. He calls them the Lego rounds, so we're gonna see <laughs> if they're overpriced and they turn into the Millennium Falcon when we shoot them down range. Um, they are just a simple lead, lead cylinder that's been screwed right onto the wad. Jeff's probably showing you these on the tabletop, so I'll shut my yap. We're gonna put them into a shotgun here, chronograph them for you. We've got short ones and long ones. Yep, two different gas seals and... Uh... So we're gonna take a look, see what they do downrange at some various targets. Uh, we're gonna start with Brandon downrange and then move over to all kinds of different explodey stuff. So let's get to it. Let's start out with the short one first. All right, that's the one that's not as tall as the other one? Yes. All right. <laughs> and load it in. Ready when you are. I'm ready. Here we go on the green tape. All right. 1434. What What did, did you say? I, sure. What did I say it was going to be the glossy yeah. I thought it was going to be? Yeah, you said. 1400. Here comes the slug. That's uh, over one and a quarter ounce of lead going down range and look at that impact. In a minute I'll go into more detail about these slugs, their history, some of the powder loads, components and all that stuff. Well first, starting back at the shooting table, that short little shell had one hell of a kick. That thing walloped my shoulder like a full size, uh, like a magnum slug and then the recoil was enough that it auto ejected it did not blow the breech open but when this thing's rested the shotgun lurches forward and it kicks itself out so that happens with the hotter slugs we have so that was pretty it's just cool. the inertia after after you fire the the breech unlocks yeah a lot of people don't realize that so we came down range we found this big giant hole we found this thing stuck in there nose first you can see all the little kevlar fiber marks on the top of it complete mushroom tip there it uh, mushroomed the lid, mushroomed all the way around that little screw. You can barely see the tip of that little screw right there. And then it's little uh, gas seal stuck on there. Still stuck in the back. We had to wedge that thing out. It took us like 15 minutes with a pocket knife. <laughs> but take a look at this. Big deep hole in the Kevlar vest. Almost made it through. I'm feeling like three layers of Kevlar between my two fingers here. Big giant bulge on the back. And... Uh, Look at uh, Brandon's little colonoscopy we we uh, performed there. Oh. Underneath, I'm feeling actually feeling into his guts. There's all just foam in there, so it punched pretty deep into him. Did not make it through the other side. It doesn't look like because the uh, vest caught it. So anyway, it's got a good wallop to it. That was the shorty. So let's get the other the, the, the longer one. It's the exact same powder load, 32 grains of long shot. It should be the same recoil and everything. The difference is Good. one short, one long. Let's go back in time to 1931 during the middle of the Great Depression, an inventor named Carl Foster invented the Foster Slug. This one invention probably prevented a lot of families from starving to death during those very difficult times. For those that didn't have the luxury of owning a rifle but maybe owned a shotgun, this allowed them to reach out a lot further than buckshot and get some game. Now the idea of a shotgun slug wasn't exactly new, as the Brennecke slug was invented in the late 1800s. But again, we're talking about the Great Depression, 
and this German slug may not have been available, may have been too expensive, or maybe there was just some resentment about buying a German product in a post-war America. Both the Foster and Brennecke slugs are still around today. This is the Yankee Hill slug, also invented in the United States in the 1930s. Now, just like the Brennecke, this uses a mechanical fastener, also known as a screw, to attach it to a wad. Now, of course, at the time, that wad would be made out of felt or leather or cork, but it all stays attached to the slug, and the Yankee Hill relies on that to cause it to have drag so it flies straight through the air. The Foster Slug is mostly hollow, so this gives it a center of gravity that's way forward that helps to stabilize it. But the Foster Slug and the Brennecke also have these slanted ribs on them. As both of these slugs travel down the barrel, friction alone causes these slugs to spin. There's not a tremendous amount of spin, but it does aid in the stability of both of these slugs. Since the Brennecke Slug is solid, it needs that lightweight wad attached to it in order to move the center of gravity forward. The Yankee Hill is solid, but it has no fancy ribs on it. There's no spin at all on these, but it does have the attached wad, which moves the center of gravity forward and causes drag. Leon wanted us to test these using two different types of wads, this green brush wad and the shorter FS12 gas seal. For the sake of consistency, both of these are loaded with the same powder load and will be shot through the same gun throughout the test. Okay, now we got the longer version, the green wad. Let's see how accurate that is. Okay, I'm ready. All right, on the nose. Okay, another long one. I'm ready. Here we go. All right, this is shot number two using the green wad. The first shot was using the little shorter white wad. Now, Greg was using the same point of aim or POA. And just like in the first shot, the point of impact was a little right and a little bit low. In shot number three, well, it's almost a mirror image of shot number two and shot number one as far as point of impacts go. So in case you haven't figured it out yet, we are essentially grouping these or checking the slug's precision shot per shot. What's your excuse? Well, <laughs> I don't have a lot of excuses. We shot two of these, both of them hit the bear above his left arm, right here at the bottom of his cheek and uh, plowed through number one and number two. One almost exactly on top of the other. They were both very consistent in that they were right and low. I was aiming at his nose. And I think it missed, the first one missed number three altogether, but here's something interesting. On number two, if you can zoom in here, while the round hit, I think it was catapulted up. I think it hit and started veering upward because it exited higher. You can see this gnarly exit wound. Yeah. That's new. And just like a wad cutter pistol round, these cylinders, because they don't have a lot of point to them, they're tearing through this ballistic gel and making these nasty wounds. Look at that shredded rubber gummy. But it hit number two, it exited high on its way out and hit this guy, his partner, up high by his eye. So, And you can tell right here, the wound track, it goes in here and exits way up here. So I think it was tumbling upward yeah, shot we'll up probably see that on high speed. It probably shot down an airplane on its way through. Oh yeah. Jeff brought a stack of wet magazines, the uh, fan favorite wet magazines. These things have been soaking for a couple of days in a bucket of water. They are kind of famous for stopping just about everything short of a freight train. So we're going to try one of these rounds in two. Who is on the cover here but Justin Beaver eating a cupcake. Yeah, who doesn't like Justin Beaver? Oh, he's about eight everybody. years old. He was already coked up and uh, he'd already made $17 million by the time he ate that cupcake. So so we're going to try and put a slug right there into the wet magazines. Let's give it a try. Justin Beaver in the face. Wow. Yeah, confetti. 1421. The, the shorties are faster. Yeah, they are. Same powder. Wow. Shot number four. Again, we're using the white wad, which for some reason has given us about 100 feet per second faster velocity than using the green wads. Fortunately, the point of impact on either of the wads are nearly identical. That makes life a little easier. So I was aiming at Justin Bieber's face. I don't know if you can even see down here past this flower of destruction, but uh, it hit slightly low and slightly right again. Not as low and not as right, but still low and right. Look at that flower though. That's you wild. Could, you could trim that out of there and give that to mom for Mother's Day. <laughs> 
pull out a big giant channel. I mean, like, I got my finger inside this little. Can you see know, through it? You can almost see daylight through there. Oh. The pages back here were lined up. Oh, okay. But take a look back here. You guys already saw it probably on the. Flip it around. All this... right, here we go. There we go. The slug did exit. You saw all the confetti blow out the back. Now, a foster slug will not go through that. No, no. Look at that. It'll damage. flatten out. But yeah, that thing, it's that got is... good penetrating power there. <laughs> This thing is equivalent to like a, a Toyota engine. Yeah, it, as it I've is. said, it's it's you got ballistic gel, all these different mediums. Yeah. And I for me for me this represents like a a deer or something, you know? Sure. The the meat of a deer. How come you got one in here called Boy's Life? I don't know. This one's called Walk in the Park. Carpetedvan.com. <laughs> Going on here, Jim. I'm gonna aim at green dot number one, and we expect it. We expect to find our round uh, burrowed, burrowed into uh, that area. Yeah, rather than uh, adjust the red dot on his shotgun to for this round, and then yeah. it'll work fine for that. But then we go to the net. You know, he goes to shoot a foster slug, and it's gonna be shooting high and left. You know, if this was your hunting shotgun or home defense shotgun, and this was the only round you were gonna use, you would dial your red dot to compensate for the round. We, however, are using kind of a control uh, shotgun that shoots everything in the world, and uh, the rounds are going to impact differently out of that shotgun. Now on green dot number one, 13, 14, 100, about 100 feet per second slower. Yeah. Well, it almost proved our point. <laughs> it uh, it did go low and right once again, very consistently inaccurate or not inaccurate. Not inaccurate they're, but they're 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 consistent in, points of impact versus the point of aim. Yeah. yeah. It didn't go as far though. I overestimated how far it was going to drop and and uh, veer to the left, but still low and low and right. It's a shallow crater, but it's a big giant wound, so that's... Soft lead. Soft lead We've splattering. learned soft lead will probably never penetrate that. Yeah, yeah. No matter how fast and heavy you, you, you know. Yeah. Lead on lead crime. This is our fifth round. They've all, every single one of them, been pretty consistently low and right. Sometimes a little bit more low and a little bit more right, but... So I think we're confident enough in where they're landing now that we can get a little bit smaller targets. Let's try something that's kind of... Explodey for you. Yes. So we have uh, a cylinder here of New Jersey ballistic jelly, three cans of expired tomato sauce. Uh, we're going to try and hit. It's a, as you can tell, it's a pretty small cylinder, and we found those things to be uh, low and right. So I'm actually going to hold up here with my red dot and hope that we can dump around right in there. Let's see if we can make a cool explosion for you out of some uh, New Jersey ballistic jelly. Okay, let's see if Greg can do it. Oh boy, this is. Total. Moment of truth. Okay, I'm ready. Sorcery and witchcraft here. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. I think that was pretty good. I actually shattered those pans. Yeah. Well, folks, I think I have a new favorite target. And I think it's safe to say that the precision of this nearly 90 year old slug design is pretty darn good. Now that's a rather small target and normally we don't shoot anything that small unless we're really confident in where the slugs are actually going to impact. Leon did a fantastic job casting these with that old Yankee Hill mold. Well, yeah, no, I think he finally figured out where these things are going. Nobody's more shocked than this guy. Um, the cans were sitting like this. I actually held my red dot way up here hoping to uh, drift it into the center. And they hit pretty much in the center. This is the first one. Look how round it that little hole is right there. It outwards from the yeah, hydrostatic force. Is that the material shooting back out? Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's like a hubcap. Instead of going inwards, it bulged it outwards. But we can tell this is the first one. What's odd about these shards that we found out here, there's like no tomato sauce inside of them. <laughs> you so think we washed them off. Either these things were completely clean and, the, we, and we were getting jobbed at the, down at the grocery store, or the hydrostatic shock was such that it blew all the material into vapor and uh even crazier is the table there's like no, nothing on the table yeah if little, there is there's a, a little mist yeah a little bit of sauce here and a couple little droplets here but you guys have seen out here before we've blew up some 
gross things and it just goes everywhere. This, yeah. This was all airborne. Here's what's kind of cool. We found a couple of these little pieces here, these little end caps that blew open as the round was tearing its way through. And this is the mo this one took me a minute to understand what was going on. We've got two copper sides. That indicates that we got two insides. But what happened here, this is actually the end of one and the top of another. They got blasted together and the little petals locked them together. The little <laughs> opening petals actually just kind of tabbed themselves together and opened up the end of can number two and the beginning of can number three and fused that was a together. good that was your idea to bring that out don't that's ever a great have any target. Good ideas oh, oh no good ideas <laughs> so we're gonna take this and make it into a necklace <laughs> something stupid. a belly button ring oh jesus nobody wants to see that in any way shape or form <laughs> however i just thought that the impact was pretty dang cool so yeah give this a try here we go whoa nice it's a girl Let's go Canada! Okay, normally like channels like Hitchcock 45, they'll shoot the jug, you know, the easy way. This is the hard way. <laughs> this is shooting the water, the soda jug. Especially the hard a, way. Yep, especially with a round that requires some holdover. Right. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Here we go. Nice. Wow. Here we go. Nice. Now, I think you'll agree that shooting a two liter bottle lengthwise is a little more challenging, but it also makes a much more energetic reaction. And when you're filming with a high speed camera, that's kind of what you want. All right, Jeff took your advice. He strained the clear ballistics gel. He melted it down and strained it through a coffee filter. <laughs> and it went from brown to perfectly clear. What just happened here? No, I went to Morris Levin and Sons and bought a new block the other day. Yep, brand new clear ballistics jelly. Uh, despite all of the comments that we should just strain it when we melt it down, it doesn't work that way. Imagine running red Kool-Aid through a coffee filter and expecting it to come out crystal clear <laughs> in a jar. It doesn't work that way, so. Imagine. Mar straining marshmallow cream at you know 270 degrees through a coffee filter. I can't figure why in my life I would need to do that. But it's about the same thing. It's very right. very viscous. Viscous even. Yeah. And vicious. However, we got a brand new block of clear ballistics gelatin. We're going to try one of these rounds. I, I got things something to say about it. Yes. It it was sitting on the shelf of the store for three at least three years so it was it, i got some footage of it i'll show you right now wow. how wrinkly the dang thing was. It, was it looked like a prune so like anything you sit around long enough and get old enough you start getting wrinkly yeah and uh, look like a so it, it, it has this weird watery ice cube look look to it so it will still show um i think it's still going to show up pretty good yeah panel. yeah and actually my prediction with these kind of rounds because they're sort of a uh, wad cutter, semi wad cutter kind of design. I think we're going to see a pretty, pretty gnarly wound track inside of there. Yeah. And hopefully, maybe we won't dump it on the ground, but the law of physics says it's going on the ground. Yeah. We want to show how much energy, you know, the block of gel weighs about 20 pounds or 17 pounds. I think somebody said, I, I haven't weighed it. It's, it's pretty heavy and it takes a lot of energy to, to, to throw that block. Yes. And we like to show that if we tight it down, it would block the camera. And it also wouldn't show how much energy we right. like. It, it, it's it's some, another thing we look at. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ow. And your gel stayed clean. Oh, oh no! Gel almost stayed clean. No. And your gel stayed clean. It almost stayed on the table, folks. <laughs> right at the last minute, we were both high fiving, virtual high five, and then the legs of the table collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the ground, so. But here's the thing: you just wash it off. That's true. Just Maybe wash it off, or strain it through a paper towel. <laughs> um, the round hit kind of low. It made a really impressive little wound track. Went all the way through the gel and exited back here. Um, from that angle, Jeff, you can you can't really see, but there's some pretty impressive petals up here. Can you rotate it for us? Yes. Well, see, there's there's your thing. I put this dark piece of uniform pants behind it to help it stand out, but. Take a look from up here. Do I have to, can you rotate so I can look? Oh, there you, you go. better from there? Yeah. Look how wide that is. 
I don't think it doesn't the wound track doesn't look like the thing started to tumble it's just that's where it happened to push all of its energy out at about four yeah we, we noticed that it dumps you can see by the the cavity and stuff it's it the cavity you know maximizes its energy jump at about two or three inches into the gel yeah which is which, which makes sense it's at its near highest velocity and then and that is where you want it to uh, do most of its damage if you're hunting something with this two-legged or four-legged so and then here's the cool thing down here on the ground right next to it we found this Kevlar wrapped slug sitting there waiting for us it hit plowed through the gel had exited out the back and hit three layers of Kevlar vest we consistently saw about a hundred feet per second more with the little short ones than we yeah. did with the long ones for well, some reason I don't know why I'm sure there's a reason for it. Maybe sure. Leon can explain that to us. Anyway, we were kind of impressed with how consistently inconsistent these were. They were always low and right, sometimes more lower and righter than before. But eventually you were able to compensate for that and make it, you know, so you could hit it right. where, you wanted, where, where, where you wanted it to go. I can't end, talk. You're compensating for a lot, so being able to drop that low and right and hit little things like the little tomato paste can, nobody was more shocked than me. Yeah. It's great when we can get an accurate shot like that. Yes. Because it's, you know, we only had 10 of these to screw around with. and Yeah, but we had fun doing it. It was a, it's a, it's a hell of a round. A very, very simple design that actually causes quite a bit of damage. Yeah. I mean, it's a, everything we hit that had any kind of fluid or expansion to it showed us that that transferred a lot of energy into that. You probably saw Brittany and uh, Justin Beavers go flying off the top of the gel a minute ago. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll show that after this. Ah. Sometimes I do that. Uh, just to keep them watching until the... Yeah, th yeah, then you get all these commenters that saying, you should have filmed the, the gel block in high speed. It's like, did you not watch the last 10 seconds of the video? No, <laughs> apparently don't. not. They don't. Yeah. I've never seen Jeff in a video before. <laughs> Jeff's been in about 100 videos. You really do have to watch the whole thing, and you got to watch uh, all the videos. Yeah, so. yeah. But we appreciate you guys stopping by. It was another fun slug test. So we hope you liked it and got a little of enjoyment and some knowledge out of it. Go over and check out the buck and slug. Careful reloaded. not to say a different way. It's the <laughs> buck and slug. The buck and slug reloading page on Facebook and also the buck and slug reloading channel on YouTube. I think you guys will like it if you're into this kind of thing. And upload more videos, Leon. <laughs> We'll send some viewers over there, and they, they're going to be mad if you don't upload new That's videos. That's right. you got to have at least two a week. <laughs> Speaking of not getting enough videos uploaded. Yeah, you're uh, kind of late there. I'm, well, yeah, i got a full-time job, so anytime after my full-time job and house duties, I every once in a while I get a video uploaded over on OG's Danger Show. It constantly amazes me how many people come over to my channel and say, I've been watching Tough Litter Mouse for years. I never knew you had a channel. <laughs> it's been two years you now. You say it. We, we, I know. I, 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 Actually, <laughs> you know, it's like the only perk you get out of being in my videos is, is promotion for your, your that's stuff. That's the only perk. <laughs> I get all the crazy women. <laughs> no, really, it is the only perk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, swing by OG's Danger Show here on YouTube. If you haven't already seen it, there's some different kind of stuff over there. You think you might like it. Anyway, until the next video, we will see you guys. Boom. Boom.